this video, I'll be taking you through the initial setup of your session using our Works 2.0 Audio Spatializer. As you can see on my left, I already have a few tracks made. These are mono tracks. They'll be treated as objects, which means that they'll be moving independently throughout the space. And then we have stereo and 5.1 channel tracks. And these will be moving as groups around the space. And then we have ambisonics, a quad ambisonics track. A quad ambisonics track will be moving as a sphere. It's a spherical audio format uh, for those of you that don't know. And yeah, let's go ahead and add the slaves. And it's important to remember that the slaves will be last in your processing chain. So keep that in mind. We'll add the GWORK slave first and we'll go ahead and enable automation, azimuth, elevation and distance. So instead of pressing Alt and applying the slave to all of my audio stems at once, I like to just add it to the one and then select Alt and drag. By doing this, my automation parameters will already be enabled for each audio track type. So I'm going to have to do this again for the stereo, the 5.1 and the quad tracks. And for my quad ambisonics track, I will be having to select between FUMA, FUMA, or ACN. This is the ambisonics channel ordering. I won't get into the specific details of both. Um, just know that you can choose and use either one. So now that that's been said, we'll go ahead and add a works master to our master fader channel. Now, as I proceed, there are three very important things that you must be aware of. One is that the master plugin needs to go last in the order of tracks. Two is that any plugins that you put on the master track will not be reflected in your final spatial mix. This means that you must do all the mixing and mastering on each track itself for all of your stems. Now you could also bounce out each stem and then re-import them. And you can also use Audio Suite. And three, the Pro Tools fader information will not be reflected in the final mix. So you must use our own built-in volume fader or you can use a trim plugin or a gain plugin directly on the channel. This is the way that we've gotten it to work in Pro Tools, and this is the only way that we've been able to make it work on this specific DAW. We'll proceed without video right now. So our objects are just a single circle, which can be moved anywhere in space. And then our stereo channels are going to be two left and right squares, which also can be moved anywhere in space, but you can't separate them. And then we have our ambisonics, which is this sphere. If you look to my right at the map section, you'll be able to see how that's moving around in the spherical space. So that pretty much sums it up for the initial setup.